Would you like to make video games, but you're not sure where to start? Well, in this course, we teach you the fundamentals of game development the fun way. We teach you C Sharp as a programming language, and we use the Unity Game Engine, which is the world's most popular game engine for indie game developers. And no matter what your experience level, if you're starting from absolute zero, we will look after you and teach you all of the fundamentals so you can get in there and start making 2D video games. The first section of the course is called Delivery Driver. It's a simple top-down 2D driving game where you're delivering packages from one house to another. We're going to talk about how collisions and triggers work. We'll be talking about variables, if statements, methods, tags, and components to get you started with the fundamentals of C Sharp and the fundamentals of using the Unity game engine. In the next section, we're going to focus heavily on user interface. We're going to learn all about scriptable objects. We're going to be using arrays, for loops, lists, buttons, sliders, and a whole bunch more UI elements. And then next up, we have a little project called Snowboarder, where you make a fun little side-scrolling flippy spinny type game using Unity sprite shapes. We'll be implementing Cinemachine for the first time using a follow camera. We'll be talking about triggering particle effects and sound effects, rotating objects, scene management. Then after that, we're going to be jumping into Tilevania, which is our tile map creation project. We're using tile map, which is a super powerful way to build 2D games in Unity. We'll be setting up rule tiles, tile palettes, slicing sprite sheets. We'll be talking about the fundamentals of animation. We'll be using the new input system and a little bit of level design so we can make a fun game where you can progress from level to level. And then the next section of the course is a top-down shooter called Laser Defender, where we're gonna be looking at a whole bunch of more advanced concepts such as the singleton pattern, coroutines, while loops, instantiation, pathfinding using waypoints, and end up making, I think, a really cool shooter game that you can give to your friends and say, hey, see if you can beat this game I made. And as being part of the course, you get access to all of our support forums and our world-class teaching assistants who will be there to answer any questions you might have and to make sure that you never get stuck as you're going through this journey. So who are we? Well, my name is Rick Davidson and I'm part of the Game Dev TV team. And together we've taught more than 1 million students the joys of game development. And you know what? There's never been a better time to learn game development. So why don't you jump in and join us on the course now? Hello and welcome to the course. My name is Rick. I'll be one of your instructors on this journey for learning Unity and C Sharp. Now in this first section of the course, we'll be getting ourselves set up by downloading and installing Unity and Visual Studio Code, making sure that works nicely. We'll also be showing you how to get support, where to go in terms of joining our support forums, how to ask questions so that you never get stuck. And this first section will do a little bit of playing around with Unity. So if you're very, very new to it, if you haven't used it before, we'll just do a little bit of a familiarization in terms of how the interface works. If you've used Unity a bunch, then so long as you've got the version that we've which is Unity 2021, then you're good to go. You can jump to the next section of the course and start making some games. So let's get started with download. Hello and welcome. Let's get downloading because in the show we're going to be installing Unity Hub, Unity 2021, and Visual Studio Code. The step in this process is for us to jump into our browser and type in download Unity Hub. Unity Hub, we can then find, should be the very first link here, download Unity Hub. That will take you to this particular website, which is unity3d.com. And you can find the big green button, which says download Unity. You click on that, that will start downloading Unity Hub. Now, what is Unity Hub, you say? Well, I've already downloaded it, so I'll show you. This is Unity Hub. It's a place that you can manage all your various projects you're working on. You can see I've got a bunch I'm working on, as well as your different installations of Unity. You can have multiple different versions of Unity going on your computer at the same time, which is really cool. And for me, I'm going to be using Unity 2021.1. You don't need to worry so much about the following dot whatevers, uh, but I also have on my computer 20.2 and uh, some of the older versions. Now, once you've finished downloading Unity Hub, Click on the button and follow the installation process. I know you've installed things before, so you don't need me to show you about that. One thing you might come across is at some point, Unity might say, you need to sign up to be a Unity person. No problems, go through that uh, sign up process, pop in your email address, whichever one you want to use. And the license you're looking for is the personal license, which is free up until the point where you're earning $100,000. So hopefully you get there really soon, but I'm assuming 
not there just yet in terms of using Unity. So you go through all that process. Once Unity Hub has installed, find and open that, click on the installs button on the left hand side, click on add, and add your very first version of Unity. Now, a couple of things to point out here. LTS stands for long-term support. In general, I always recommend working on a version of Unity that has long-term support. I'm a little bit naughty. I'm working in Unity 2021 at the moment, and it doesn't yet have long-term support, but I'm doing that so that when you're watching this in the future, hopefully it will have long-term support. Uh, by the time that you're getting to this and working through it. And so once you've selected the version that you're looking for, and I recommend you 2021 point whatever is relevant to you at this time, click on next, and then you'll see a whole bunch of things that we can add as uh, additional modules for this. So at the moment, I've got nothing selected. You might have the Microsoft Visual Studio community already selected. We're going to unselect that because this is the, the editor we type our code in. We're not going to use uh, Visual Studio community. We're going to be downloading something slightly Visual Studio Code. The reason we're using Visual Studio Code is because it looks the same on Windows and Mac and Linux, and you won't have a problem with having, if you're working on one of the other systems, I'm working with Windows, you won't have a problem with yours looking different to mine. The one other thing I'd recommend adding on here, if you scroll down and find WebGL build support, click on that so that we can install that as well. That means that we can create our game so that people can play them on a website, which is really cool, really neat. Click on that and then click on done and then go through that process of installing Unity. So I'm going to click on done and then it's going to go through that swish process of downloading and installing in the, in the one go. So that should all be done from that point of view. So while that's going through that process, let's go grab Visual Studio Code. Once again, type in download Visual Studio Code or you can click on the link I've given you against this lecture in the resources section. Now, where is that? That will depend upon the platform you're viewing this video in. Our courses tend to be on a couple of different platforms. So you're over in the right hand side next to the video or down the bottom underneath the video, depending upon where you're watching it. So I find download Visual Studio Code, either by typing into Google or by clicking on the link we've given you, and then select your relevant operating system. For me, it's Windows. Click on that, go through this process. It'll start down. Once again, wait for it to download, click on the button, go through the prompt, say yes, yes, yes to all of the good things it asks you you want to do, and then you'll have that all ready to roll. So while we're downloading and installing, let me give you some context. We're using Unity, which is a game engine. Unreal is another very well-known popular game engine, and we're using Visual Studio code is our integrated development environment, our IDE. This is a place where we type our code. So what do we get for using a game engine? Well, it's a visual interface for creating games where we get a whole bunch of systems which have existing code we can use, such as a physics system or a rendering system or an audio system that we don't have to go and try to code those and create those absolutely from scratch. There's so much of a head start we get by using engine. And then what is an IDE? Well, it helps us write code to tell the game engine what to do. And it gives us a whole bunch of things like autocomplete or color coding or syntax error checking. So that as we type along, it's like a friendly assistant that'll say things like, hey, Rick, you typed that wrong, you bozo. That you can make corrections. Maybe it won't say exactly that, but you know what I mean? It's going to give you input and guidance as along. How do these two interface? Well, when you're creating files in Visual Studio Code, or when we create, we'll be creating .cs files, files that work with Unity to tell Unity what to do. So the files that we create that are whatever .cs, uh, I'll be referring to as scripts. Okay, so a quick intro, quick overview of how these things fit together. Uh, good luck with the downloading process. Hopefully it's going quickly for you. And in the next lecture, we'll have a little bit of a play around with the Unity interface so we can start to get out. Okay, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about the game design for the Delivery Driver project. Why do we talk about game design? Well, I think it's really important to establish some general guidelines for what it is we're going to work on. And so you know how to make better decisions throughout the process. It's really, really useful to start with a gameplay overview screen like I've got here. It can be a very rough mock-up with little cubes and circles and what have you, just so you get a feel for your game and you can start to visualize how your game is going to play. So in our game, we need to have the player's car. We need to have some obstacles you can bump into. I'd like to have some speed up things that allow me to go a little bit quicker. Also, we need to have some sort of packages that you pick up or when you pick them up, they disappear. And then we have the customer or some sort of delivery spot we have to deliver the package too. We're not looking for something super sophisticated, just the general mechanic of you can drive, speed up, pick up things, bump into things, and deliver to the customer. Now, if we look at the game mechanics that we need 
Let's build. We need to start thinking about what are we programming? What do we have to create as developers? Well, we need to have our car driving forwards, and I'd also like to have it driving backwards. We need to have the car able to turn left and to turn right, obviously. We want to be able to increase the speed of our car when we drive over speed ups and also decrease the speed of the car when we bump into slowdowns. We also need to have some sort of mechanism so we can pick up packages when we drive over them and also some mechanism to deliver packages when we drive over the delivery spot. So in our code, we need a way to pick up and put down the packages. And also I'd like to have within our code a way to change something about our game. And I think the color of the car is a good way to show the status of whether you have picked up the package or whether you've had to slow down or whether you're going fast. And uh, just a simple change of color, I think, will allow us to do that. I also like to cover three main things when I'm creating a game, particularly when we're creating these small games. I like to look at the player experience. Well, what is the player experience? This is the feeling you want one player to have when they're playing your game. For me, I'm looking for a relaxing feeling, just driving around, picking up things, going a little bit faster a little bit slower. I'm not looking for an experience which might be, say, frantic or might be uh, make the player feel clever or uh, might make the player feel rushed or panicky. I'm not going for that. I'm going for relaxing. So it's good for you to identify what's the feeling you want the player to have. And also just jot down the core mechanic. For us, it's really simple. You drive over pickups. That's our core mechanic. So you roll these speed things to speed you up. You drive over packages. You drive over where the customer is. What's the game loop? Find and all the packages to win the game. So I encourage you whenever you're working on a new project just to be thinking about these things. It's not a lot of work to jot down these three things, but once you start to build your project properly, you want referring back to these and be consistent with it, particularly the player experience. Don't start off making a relaxing game halfway through say oh, I'll make it frantic and then decide you're gonna make it uh, a puzzle game that will lead to a game that doesn't feel coherent okay so there's not much to do in this lecture except I do have a quick challenge for you I'd like you to let us know in the forum discussions and I've given you a link that you can click on to take you to the right spot what is your plan delivering so for my game what am I delivering well hmm, I'm gonna be delivering tasty donuts to game development instructors whose wives are currently out of the house and won't know that the game development instructor is eating junk food when he should actually be eating roasted kale or some other sort of appropriate for someone your age type of snack. So, you know, that might be a little bit too much to communicate to the player, but oh, we'll give it a shot and see how it goes uh, delivering tasty donuts for these uh, poor, unfortunate people at home that are, uh, well, you get the picture. So anyway, there's the challenge. There's a context for it. Take on that challenge when you're done, when you've posted what you're delivering, jump into the next lecture and we'll continue on uh, starting to create